some people started telling me about energy and saving energy. And some people started telling me different ways of saving energy. And the long words that people use is energy efficiency, being efficient, saving energy. What is energy? What's energy? Before we start thinking of how to save it, maybe we need to be saying, what is energy? Someone's telling me energy is... You, um, like, burn... If you burn forest, then you make energy. Say if you burn coal, you can make electricity. How do you get energy? Energy comes from a number of sources. There are two types. Renewable energy and non-renewable renewable energy. Renewable energy it comes from the sun, which is solar energy, and wind, and uh, water. The non-renewable energies are, f comes from fossil fuels, that is oil, gas, and coal. It says here, a PC monitor switched off overnight saves enough energy to microwave five tins of baked beans. How much energy do we waste? If you brush your teeth, when you're brushing your teeth, don't leave the tap on because then you're wasting water. But when you want to rinse your toothbrush, off, um, then you can turn on the tap. We waste a lot of energy, especially in the UK. For example, leaving our TVs on standby, we waste up to £250 million pounds a year. Some people, they put it on standby and then that's wasting even more energy because you're not really turning it off. You're just um, making the t um, t TV screen go blank. And, so, and if you turn it off from the button, then you're, you turn it completely off and you're not wasting energy. Now imagine we stop doing that, how much money we would have to spend on other things like hospitals. So it is important that we stop say, wasting energy and become more energy efficient. Say you was going to have a cup of tea, only use the um, amount of water for the kettle as you want your cup of tea. Say if you just wanted one by yourself, don't just get the whole cup of water and then pour it in. Get only the amount of water for yourself. Thank you very much. Have a look around the houses. Someone asked for a four bedroom to be open. My is Mike Tyrrell. I'm the chief executive of Tower Hamlets Community Housing. Been in this job for the last seven years. Prior to that, I worked for the council. And uh, I got into housing in the first place because I believe that providing services to residents has got to be the foremost thing that we do in, in the housing department. And being a, a local resident of Tower Hamlets for many, many years, I think I know what uh, residents expect and that's what I want to deliver. I think for a landlord to encourage residents to become more energy efficient, we need to do those kind of things first. So for example, we've taken on board a number of energy efficiency issues that have got from our local offices to start with. So our local offices are much more energy efficient uh, in terms of uh, lighting, in terms of water usage and also in terms of seepage of energy through uh, uh, uninsulated areas. So if we get the office environment right, we should then work on getting the home environment right. 
to get a home environment right, we maximise the opportunity we do, we, every opportunity we can to insulate homes. So a lot of the work, refurbishment work we've done in Tower Amlets has included insulation. And so that the residents don't pay for that, we've maximised the amount of grants we get from the energy companies. So for example, uh, EDF, which is what London Electricity used to be called, they can pay out grants to organisations that provide much more energy efficiency uh, uh, on, on the estates. Uh, plus, as part of that, we have a regular monthly magazine called Update. That goes out to all our residents with uh, energy saving tips, plus also we've got an energy saving leaflet available. All that comes as our new tenants pack for uh, anyone who joins THCH as a resident. So we're out there promoting it, but also it's no good promoting it unless you do it. And at THCH, that's what we're doing. That's quite right because they do say that with central heating systems you should only have them on for certain times in the day. You only really want them on just before you get up for about an hour while you're getting ready to go out and do your business in the daytime and then when you come home in the evening you want it on for a few hours in the evening to keep you warm. In that sense, central heating systems run that way are really quite effective. These are quite good to use. If you don't trust those little gizmos on the side of your radiator, have one of these in every room. There's enough here for you to take as many as you need for your rooms. But these are, they've got a magnetic strip on the back or a sticky strip. And you should put these a metre off the floor, not obviously next to a radiator or in direct sunlight, but somewhere obviously that's pretty average for the room and you should look at this regularly because it's important to be aware of how hot or how cold your home is when you're in it for health reasons for no other reason Okay, that should be interesting. So, how much is it? Oh, um, that's cheap. Because I thought it was going to be like, more expensive, isn't it? Okay, that's that's like a good idea. Yeah, instead of in the bus, we'll take the car. It's better for us anyway. Yeah, so... Hold on a minute. Hello? What, are you guys there? Yeah, I'm coming. Two minutes, two minutes. You coming as well, yeah? <laughs> Litter. Litter is too much for Earth. Landfill sites are getting bigger and bigger. There's not enough land for any more. Landfill sites are getting sore. It might be the new law that you have to recycle. Instead of using the car, use the bicycle. It gives out less pollution. Is that the only solution? If you recycle, in future the earth will look better. The earth will be a cleaner place. So let us all solve the case. Let's make the world a better place. It's a race to make the world a better place. When new tenants join THCH, we've been promoting uh, recycling so the, the tenancy information pack tells them about what can be recycled in Tower Amits because we all know uh, different boroughs uh, have, have different uh, recycling schemes plus also what day the local recycling is. So, you know, it's, it's promoting that the, the recycling is available plus also where are local bottle banks and, uh, and, and also for the big items. In addition, we were the first charity operating in Tower Hammonds, because THCH is also a charity, to get free recycling from the council. So in terms of our office waste, 90% of our office waste is now recycled over the last year as a result of uh, the council giving us free recycling. This event is what we call a give or take day. What we do is it's run in a, a school or a community centre and the idea is that items that you no longer want yourself can be donated 
other people that can make use of those items can take them rather than depositing them in the dustbin or your recycling bin. The, um, the idea is that you, if you have unwanted items, you can donate them. Large items will collect for the event. Um, if you haven't got any items, that doesn't exclude you from taking part in the event. You just come along on the day, you take what you, you can make use of, always leaving something for other people to go and take. This jacket, yeah, which I like, because I quite like vintage stuff, I like the way I think it's good quality and I think um, you get something that you wouldn't normally get from new stuff. And I've got a few jumpers as well, but I've also got a few books and some CDs and I think it's always good to look in secondhand things, what people throw away you might really like, you know, another man's rubbish and all that and isn't another man's treasure, so. Reusing things is important. It, um, there is a, a, a lot less energy used uh, and wasted in reusing things rather than recycling. Uh, to, to recycle is to use the component parts of something to, to, to manufacture new items, but a lot of items that are discarded have um, you know, are perfectly acceptable to, to continue using them. Um, another thing that can be useful to you if you have particular problems around um, cold home and condensation is this leaflet which the council has produced for its own tenants, but clearly the advice goes for anybody in this situation. Good tips in here about minimising moisture production in the home because the problem with cold air is it doesn't hold moisture so well as hot air. As you probably know, you try and dry clothes when it's cold. Yeah. It takes days, you know, yet when it's hot, you can do it in an hour or two. So the issue is if you're living in a cold home, for whatever reason, you're not using your heating system. I fully understand that you may not want to use it. But if you end up with a cold home, you're going to have other problems that you've got to watch out for on the health front and also in terms of condensation and mould growth. So be aware of, yeah. of this also. turn the gas off. Um, every time you leave the room you can turn off all, um, all the lights in the room. Instead of having a bath you can have a shower instead. See you next week. See ya. Hi. Bye. See you next week. Thanks for that. Social housing has been neglected for far too long. So I want to congratulate Michael and THCH's board and everybody who's been involved in putting this together from the builders, the architects and the rest of it because this is exactly what we want to see. Which one you got here? That's it, you got it. You got it.